Okay, today's a little bit different. Well, this is not what we're machining today, but just to show you why we're at the point where we're at. This was machined, the deck was machined in Winnipeg. This is a Model B block. And of course, you can pick it up or not. It has like a three foul wave in it. It's brand new board. They did the seats. Absolutely horrible. Most shops in Winnipeg, there's only one or two I would trust to even work on stuff anymore. So we're at the point we're just doing it ourselves here. This is a 27 Chevy engine right now. We're just redoing the deck. It's been welded at one point in its life. It's an engine, basically it's just to run around the guy's farm. It's a good friend of ours. So just, it's sitting up on one, two, three blocks right now. It's just, just holding. I actually had this out on one of the surface tables at work and it's relatively straightish for what it was. It did have a, a dip down here, so it makes sense where we're milling it. And uh, for anyone who cares to know where just, this is a homemade fly cutter with a brace carbide. It is balanced, that's why there's a second guy in here, but there's, I'm just using just a carboy uh breeze cutter i am getting and another thing this model a head i bought out of the states i won't say the name of the company it's a winfield that is four thou out Corey cory remembers when we put this thing on mm -hmm. so this one i actually bought a pcd cutter to do it properly and i'm going to get a c i'll get the cbn so i can use both on here it's just i was off today so i said hell with it we'll get it done anybody cares to know what i was doing i did a trial cut 700 rpm i think i got about 13 inches a minute I might even try it. I'll put, put a uh, profilometer on here to see what you get for your surface. These guys, I think the gaskets, they say 60 to 120 for your surface finish for your RA or RZ. Honestly, I can't remember that for them. But of course, we went in here, there's the blocks when it was welded. This came off of a sawmill. They ran it probably to the 40s or 50s. So it has been welded. It's got a couple little oopsies on it over the years. You can see someone went out with an eye rod. But for what it is, we'll uh, round it up and take a cut here. Let's see. Uh, now I'm, I am going to feed up on the knee for right now because this block, honestly, like I said, everything should be relatively good if it's out of power too. Not to worry too much. Safety first. Yeah, safety first. Actually, as I said, we've got like four of these engines here. Almost all of them are like a like a like a half moon, I guess you want to say. You can see this block did kick down a bit toward my hand. I might be not to lose my hand like a foot away. I'm not too concerned. So I'm like, oh, your hand's too close. But yeah, you can see the block definitely we're touching up on here. We haven't touched the backside yet. When I dialed it in, the backside was good. This side was fairly good, but it had almost like a twist to it. Whether it's factory or not, or whether the welding caused it, I don't know. Like I said, the clamps were literally. I'm just literally the past in the welders over here. Hear that noise is him moving low. See a spark in there, right? Surface finish actually the point on this kind of looks comparable. I don't know if you're gonna catch in here, but it looks comparable to the old one because you can see the machining surface in the floor. If someone's gonna say your block is sitting like this, well, you can see what that happens. Like I said, we had it up on the on the granite table at work there, and actually there's ice one. And we're sitting good for about almost three quarters of it. So. Yeah, you can start kicking around, shimming it around. And... Also, something curious to know. The head is trammed at zero right now. When we actually do this, I'm going to put a slight kick in the head. So it'll, it'll cut down maybe about a foul pound enough so you don't get dragged back on it because you can hear it dragging back on the, on the back cut. Okay, this looks okay. Like I said, we'll, uh, we'll let that run out. See, now we're starting to touch on that back side as well, so I mean, you can only be able to touch You can see it's just starting to touch over here. So what do you do? Problem with dealing 100 old, 100 year old junk. Like, what do you get? What you get? I am at the end of my limits. If anybody noticed that, if I do lost a bit of my hand there. But yeah, the finish looks pretty good. I'm fairly happy with that. That should seal quite nicely. For shits and giggles, what I'm probably going to do is a granite table behind Corey there. When this is done, I'm going to set it basically back on the same four spots run the uh, a surface gauge over and see what we're like for uh, for actual flatness in the unconstrained but yeah take one more cut here uh, 
Cleaned up there, cleaned up there, there, and there. We haven't touched the middle yet. But uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to see how sharp my cutter is. Still. I'll pull it out and take a look. But I think what I'm going to do is just tip the head slightly. I don't know if Corey wants to keep filming or call that good, but it's just kind of hillbilly, uh, hillbilly planing. Like I said, it's to the point in Winnipeg here. Most shops probably don't even want to touch this old junk, and the ones that do, you get questionable work. So what do you do, right, Corey? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of it for now. I'll probably, maybe, I don't know, like I said, a bore peeling. I'm going to tilt this and then uh, we'll show the final product when we're done. Well, I went back to work and grabbed the, I can never pronounce it, the profile, profile a meter, close enough. And uh, the, it's a little bit better finish than I would like. I'm probably going to take one more final cut because I got about 21 micro inches here. I kind of went in four spots and I'm about 20 to 25. Ideally for copper head gaskets, they say 40 to 80, so I might just bump this up, take another two thou. Just I'm going seven inches a minute. That was a 600 RPM. Maybe I'll go up to about nine inches a minute, give or take, and that should get me a little bit rougher finish. Honestly, you'd probably get away from it. It's not high compression, it would probably work. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before, always when you do this chamfer the hole is a good idea. That way then, because you, you can see always when you do it, the threads pull up. And, uh, but yeah, the reason why we started to do all this stuff if Corey comes over here, you'll see this model B block was done in Winnipeg here. And you can see, whoops, I got a zero right there. Look at that. 
you have about seven eight thou variation and i know we had this up on the granite table at work there actually on the cmm and first of all they they did a good job on the boards the boards are like nuts on but uh the decks are just brutal on this so uh this one we tried this on here after we took it off stayed well within zero i could probably put a 10th reading dial make up with tens which is good enough for this junk there's another model a yeah model a had their winfield one it's good but the dang thing's not flat and uh yeah it's working on this old junk and finding people to do it here's the camshaft that was originally out of this engine it's foobard but amazingly it's straight but i don't know if corey can get it on the lobes here you can kind of see i'll pull it off to the side there it looks like it's smiling so i'll move it in a little bit more but look at the deviation in the lobe there it's like six so i'll go up a little bit higher here but yeah look at that this thing ran a sawmill probably up into the 50s so i mean long as it probably started and ran that's all they cared about i mean really at that point thing probably didn't know anybody anything and ran it to basically blew up but yeah so that's the heads decked i'm probably gonna take one more cut on bar showing it but i'm gonna try to get about a 40 to 40 to 50 uh uh finish that's on the ra side of it and uh but yeah it can be done like i said i'm gonna go into far more depth when i do the uh model a head i'll actually take it to work put it on the on the CMM to, sh to say that it's to show how flat it actually is. But uh, for this old stuff, for this, if it's within a thou, it's more than adequate. Head gaskets generally give you a thou per cylinder, so that you're about four thou. And I think right now it's within a thou. So I put a straight edge on there with a thou feeler gauge. I couldn't get it in, 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 in under any of it. So I'm tired. It's been a long day. I think we're going to wrap it up. Corey says like, link, subscribe. All that good jazz. And I said, you might see, uh, we'll probably do the head for this engine. I might do it because I think i got to do the seats in the old IDL right there. And, uh, yeah, we'll surface it. And uh, this engine is going to run the 27 head, which if you know the 27 heads, 28. 28 is a better head because it's a two-port exhaust, but he wants to run the 27. So that's what he's going to get. So, I'll take your word for it. Uh, hey, you could put this, you put, put a head off of that on a Model A. The guy died that made the kits, but uh, guys were doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, bye for now.